Hello, thank you for joining today's Cube Armor and Acunox Office Hour. Today we have Vishnu and Salman here with us from the cybersecurity team. They're joining us to talk to us a little about cybersecurity and malware. Specifically, they'll be teaching us what TNT Bottinger malware is, why we should worry about this kind of malware, and how we can protect our cloud workload from this malware by leveraging Acunox open source. Thank you for joining us today, Salman and Vishnu. Salman, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Okay, so I'm Salman. Um, I work as a security engineer in Equinox. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so, so hopefully my screen is useful to you. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, uh, protect your cloud per cloud at your runtime. So the Akinox provides the open source tools for uh, implementing the runtime security for your workloads. So we have the uh, application uh, policies. Uh, uh, we use the Kubernetes our own uh, uh, open source product for the application policies. And uh, for the network policies, uh, we have the CDM. So uh, we build a, uh, so I can build on top of the CDM uh, to provide uh, the network policies, uh, the network securities. So uh, the TND Botinger malware using Equinox open source tools. So the agenda is, uh, I will first describe the problem statement. Uh, then uh, I will uh, go, I will walk you through the malware, which is TNT Botinger. Then uh, we can see the hands-on demo, of, uh, which is like uh, provisioning the environment to, to demonstrate the attack scenario. Then uh, we will show the attack, the attack in action, and uh, we'll show uh, how we can uh, protect uh, against uh, this attack. Okay, so uh, with the, uh, the development of the uh, contemporary infrastructure, uh, the cryptocurrency mining has grown in popularity. Like uh, the contemporary uh, infrastructure means like uh, Kubernetes. It's simple to target settings uh, like Kubernetes since in most of the cases, we might not even know uh, or even look at what the container image is built on and what it is actually doing. So there can be like uh, misconfigurations and uh, there can be unpatched vulnerabilities related to uh, Kubernetes infrastructures. So uh, another thing is the cryptocurrency mining, right? So the cryptocurrency mining means uh, it's uh, will uh, use as the resources of your uh, containers for uh, mining uh, the uh, virtual tokens. So uh, it will use as the, uh, the computation power uh, in order to mine for virtual tokens. The virtual tokens means like uh, uh, the Ethereum, Monero, uh, like that. So, so these are uh, subsequently transmitted to the attack control wallets. Okay. And then, uh, so it will. Uh, then uh, this particular TND Botinger it started with uh, the uh, XMRIC Bitcoin miner. Then uh, the XMRIC uh, Bitcoin miner uh, exploits the open Docker APIs. Then, uh, uh, so over the time. Uh, it evolved over the time. Then now we have uh, the TND Botinger. Uh, then TND Botinger have these functionalities like uh, so there is able to do Bitcoin mining and also uh, it uh, upload the, the SSH credentials and their configuration files and also like uh, sensitive files like uh, shadow files, like shadow a uh, passability file like the sensitive files, uh, it will uh, upload uh, these files to uh, a remote server. Then uh, the IRC bot. So the TNT Botinger also acts as an IRC bot. Uh, like um, they can perform the widespread uh, uh, DDoS attacks. So uh, uh, that is the you know, walkthrough of the uh, uh, TNT Botinger. Then I will go to the, uh, so I'll walk through the attack tree. So uh, here we assume that uh, the 
attacker already exploited the ubuntu container so with the, if the ubuntu container is like uh, if, if it have some misconfigurations or like uh, if it has like uh, weak passwords so it is already uh, this uh, container is already exploited so first step is like uh, uh, with the rce payload uh, uh, the attacker got the reverse shell connection established then with that reverse shell connection uh, tnd botinger the attacker upload the tnd botinger binary and uh, it is executed inside this particular uh, exploited container then what the script will do the script will first check that uh, this file is exist in the container or not so if this file is already existing then it means that uh, the uh, tnd botinger uh, malware is already inside this container so then don't need to do anything so it will uh, delete the known host and uh, the delete history because uh, like uh, uh, it will delete the footprints and just exit so if uh, this file uh, does not exist in this container that it means that uh, it you don't have the uh, botinger uh, malware inside this container so then uh, it will exit uh, the it will uh, perform this uh, function so the first function will be it will install uh, their dependencies on to the target to uh, on to the uh, target to for the smooth working of the malware then the second function will uh, create the uh, tar uh, file with the, the configuration files like uh, so it will uh, first make the tar file uh, then it will upload uh, that tar file to the uh, this remote upload server so this remote upload server is already uh, mentioned in the uh, the script which is this potinger uh, malware is using then uh, it will do uh, it will go to the other function which is get some lan ssh so in this function uh, what is this doing it it will, uh, will perform a mask scan so it will find out the host which is in the same network okay then uh, uh, this uh, output of this this one is tra uh, transferred to uh, this uh, function so in this function it attempts the authentication on newly detected ones if uh, the this effort, effort succeed like uh, so if it uh, got that authentication to the newly uh, targets then uh, it will spread the attack so uh, it's like you know uh, it will do uh, uh, already so if i got the another target host then it will again uh, run this script on that target then again it will check all these conditions so the, it will spread the attack to uh, all the uh, host in that particular network okay so this is the attack uh, tree of the uh, the tnt bot engine okay now uh, i will hand over uh, to vishnu for the uh, for uh, the hands on demo yeah. uh, thank you sir for that let me uh, let me share my screen and uh, start on the hands on demo so as salman said right uh, the attacker is going to get an rc reversal established and then execute the tnt port into my binary so once this is happened uh the container is going to spin up a, a crypto miner and it's going to propagate itself to a uh, known host so let me just uh, go ahead and uh, go to aknox samples where i'm going to take a wordpress demo as an example so that we can uh, get a better understanding on how the potential works so let me take the grow file and uh, apply it before that i uh, i already have created a cluster yeah. the sample cluster so i'm going to deploy everything over to here i'll connect i have already connected to this cluster so let me just deploy the file here ctl so it's going to deploy a wordpress application we'll configure it and then continue with the bot injector attack so it's created let me just uh, get the private ip for the public ip and uh, go to the website and show you that it's actually working it's actually working wordpress application 
Okay, so you can see the external IP source here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the application. Yes, so it's going to show me the installation steps and let's give some random values and complete the installation here. And uh, install WordPress. application is installed and uh, you can see that if this is an actual WordPress then uh, this is going to show the website here. So let's go back and execute into this code. Right. So let me show you what the default applications which are going to run inside this particular WordPress application, you can see that it, it, it has only uh, Apache processes running. And uh, since we executed into this using the bash shell, it's going to show me a bash and the last command which I typed that's the top, right? So basically, it's going to run only the Apache, right? Let me just quit and uh, show you all the processes which are running using PS and CUX, and you can see the same. It's happening here. This is the only command that's going to run since this is a WordPress application. So let me go ahead and show you one more thing. We already created one upload server, which is uh, here. So once the attack is started, it's going to create a tar file, which uh, contains the ETC password, shadow, and all the configuration files and upload to this particular server. So we have it already created here. So let me go back and uh, run the port script using this command. Okay, run this. So as you can see that uh, right after the uh, execution started, let's go to another batch shell. And I'll show you what, ha what, what happened. Uh, you can see that it's going to update and install all the dependencies which are needed for the uh, bot engine to work smoothly. So it will take some time to install all this stuff. And uh, meanwhile, I'll open up another terminal and uh, execute inside it. I'll show you the outgoing connections that are going to happen once. Once this is going to uh, work right, let me just uh, run this one also. So two terminals. You can see that it's initiating connections to uh, an IP address from where it downloaded the bash shell and it started execution. And also the application is connecting to MySQL, which which is normal because our application uses MySQL as its backend. And uh, the shell is still working, and you can see that it it is trying to cat the SSHD config and all these configuration files, and create uh, create a tar file uh, based on these SSH files and all the configuration files which it can find in the system. And uh, you can see there is another piece. It says missing cube. Here the cube is actually a boat, the IRC boat. I'll talk about it in a minute after this uh, This is completed. So if you go back to the terminal again, you can see that it's still uh, curling some agents. It's, it's downloading some agents and installing. And you can see the TSHD is actually started. So let me go back uh, to the file and uh, yeah, it was showing. Okay, so it, it, the execution actually completed. Let me go to my upload server. Okay, there is some issues. Let me just stop it for this. Okay, I think uh, due to some resource issues, the ports got evicted. Let's give it a minute so that uh, it will spin up again. Right. 
but it won't waste any resources. Okay, delete that and play the game. Creating is I'm not going to go and uh, install the WordPress application here because we already know that it's going to uh, give me U UI. So let's wait for this port to get uh, get into the running state. I'm going to make this student do it. Oh, and uh, okay, the back then one more go. Let it started. Let me show you. It's on. As you can see, it again started to download the uh, binaries which are necessary for the application to run smoothly. And uh, if you take a look at the uh, PS. Uh, you can get a clear idea on what it is installing. It's going to install PM scan, uh, which is going to be used in the uh, mass scan, which, uh, which is going to scan all the containers or ports or VMs which are connected to the same network of this particular port. So let's wait for a moment so that it's installed and uh, ready. As you can see here, it uh, it was searching for another binary, which is the bioset, and it uh, everything was missing because it, this system actually wasn't infected with any any vulnerabilities. So it's created, downloaded all those binaries, and uh, created this. Let's see that. Okay, the shell script is executed, and if you go back here, you can see that two new processes called ESHT and BIOSET started, which are part of the uh, Botinger itself. Let's go back to our uh, upload server and see. And you can see, right, uh, there was there is a new file called rsa.up.tar.gsl, which was pushed by the Botinger from this particular machine. Let's go ahead and uh, move it into temp and see what the content of that uh, file is. Let me just uh, go here and uh, untar this one. Right, you can see that it, it sent actually the etc folder. Let me just uh, show you what's inside this etc. And you can see that it has group G shadow host password and shadow files, right? Since there was no uh, configuration files for SSH or the bash history and all those stuff, it didn't. It wasn't added to the tar file. You can see that only these uh, five files were added. Let me just uh, catch you, get this host file and show you that it, it is actually the uh, host file from the uh, uh, port itself. So you can see that uh, WordPress 7 t double five, that's the host name of our port. So from this port, actually the uh, file was uploaded to this uh, upload server. And uh, you can see that uh, it already spinned up these processes, which uh, the TSHT and the BIOSEC. So let me just uh, go back, go ahead and exit from this and uh, see what and how uh, Equinox open source can protect uh, from these malwares. So uh, let me go to the cube armor. So we are going to use cube armor to uh, protect uh, ourselves from this Botinger malware. 
before that you have to install uh, since i don't have qbarmer i'm going to install qbarmer if you don't have qbarmer and if you don't know how to uh, install the cli tool for qbarmer you can always go to docs.qbarmer.com and uh, download the qbarmer cli which is the uh, cli version of our qbarmer so since i already have this installed in my system i'm just going to use qbarmer and uh, install it so once i give KRMR installed, it auto detects the environment and uh, deploys Kubamo ports here. Let me just uh, get uh, the ports and see whether it's running or not. So it's creating. Let's wait for a moment. And you can see that uh, Kubamo, two, two of the Kubamo ports are running, and one is on creation state. Let me go back and uh, uh, get a policy. So if you head back to Qbarmer policy templates, here you can see that we have predefined policies created for each and every scenarios which you may or may not encounter. Right? So you can, uh, if you have any specific CV related issues, you can always go to the uh, policy template and go to CVEs and you can see there are predefined policies uh, designed and tested by our team for each uh, series. And uh, since this is the malware, we are going to go to malware folder and uh, uh, we are going to protect it from the system using the Kubama. So we'll use the uh, file that's here, right? That's the TNT port uh, policy. So let me just uh, get this. Uh, there are two things that you need to change before you apply these policies, which are namespace and the uh, labels. Let me go back and show you what the labels for my uh, deployment is. You can see that it's uh, app equals to WordPress and it's deployed onto the default namespace itself. So I can directly use this policy to block the TNT port inside. Let me copy this and uh, go back to my terminal, clear this out and uh, apply this policy. So you can see that uh, the Cubama security policy is created. Let me just show you that it's there. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is the Cubama policy which we just now created. Let me see the poll. Make sure that the uh, QArmor is also running. Right, so QArmor is up and running. Let me just clear this one. Again, get the name of my code. That's the WordPress. Go inside it with Mota and uh, bash it. Yes, before doing that, let me just uh, remove all the files that are here so that uh, we can get a better understanding on what happens once we install QBarmer and uh, once we don't have QBarmer, right? So I just uh, executed into this code. Let me just use that uh, and uh, open another here. Uh, before, okay, let me also show you how to get the uh, QBarmer logs, right? If you, let me just port forward this QBarmer service uh, relay to 32767 and uh, let me use the command KRMR logs so that you can uh, get the logs and alerts in an instant once something has happened, right? So we have the policy applied and we have qbarmer here let me copy the command once more and uh, apply it over here and uh, see what happens right. the, the moment uh, somebody tried to use apt to uh, get the updates there was a alert which was created. And if I zoom in, you can see that uh, uh, 
let me just uh, take one. Yes, if you see this uh, particular world, right? From the host, uh, that's our uh, a cluster node uh, in the namespace default. This particular port try to use the apt get update command to uh, update the machine, right? So uh, this was triggered. And if you go and take a look at uh, one more, let's take uh, one more, right? So yeah, here, if you see this one, when we try to use the TSHD, which is uh, the minor part of this TNT Botinger, uh, the Cuba was able to deny the execution of this TSHD and uh, protect us from um, getting this uh, minor installed in our system. So as you can see that uh, even after the uh, shell is uh, halfway through, you can see that there is no new process created because Cubama restricted the uh, execution of this uh, TSHD and uh, uh, SBIN and uh, BIOSET. So it's going to take some time to complete the shell script. Let's wait uh, for a moment and see what happens when you have Cubama and uh, if there is a binary or the TND Bottinger is trying to uh, install to our system, right? And uh, if you take a look at this top, right, uh, you can see, still see that uh, we only have the legitimate process Apache 2 running. And since we have two, three shells running with the uh, top bash and all the stuff that's also coming up and uh, showing this uh, top result. Let's wait till the, uh, yeah, I think it's going to complete in, in a minute or so. And uh, e even if you take a look at the uh, uh, shell uh, script, right? You can see that uh, some commands, in some commands, the permission was denied because Kubernetes is denying these binaries to execute uh, and uh, making sure that our workload is safe and secure. So if I go back here, see, uh, at first when I showed you, there was a process called TSHT and BIOSET created. And even after the uh, shell, is, shell script is completed and uh, uh, it's exited, we there is no uh, TSHD and uh, BIOSET created in this uh, in this terminal or in this port. So if I go back to the uh, upload server and uh, to an LS rate, we can see that even after the shell is completed, the script is completed, there is no uh, tar file which is uploaded to our uh, upload server. So with Cubarmer, you can see uh, Cubarmer protected us from this TNT potential and it showed you real time alerts uh, 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 with uh, proper tags and uh, messages so that you can uh, relax and uh, make sure that your workload is protected using Cubarmer. So if I go back here and uh, show you right, uh, so these are the binaries which are going to get created once the uh, Botinger is installed to your, to your system. As I said, uh, the S pin is the SM rig miner and TSHD is going to bind it to a port 51982 and act as a backdoor. And uh, the queue, uh, which was also blocked, is the IRC port and it's going to get binded to 1982 using the uh, binary bioset. Yeah, I think uh, that's it on the hands-on demo. Thanks, Vishnu. Thanks, Salman. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, may I? Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, so why one should worry about these crypto mining malware or DDoS attack, uh, especially by this particular group, right? Team TNT. Okay, yes. Uh, for that, uh, let me go back to a previous slide, which talked about the um, miner itself, right? So at first the TNT Bottinger was just a miner, just a crypto miner. And over time it uh, got, uh, since it wasn't detected by any any uh, security tools or anything that's already existing, it uh, got uh, got its um, um, upgrade and it, it actually turned into uh, a IRC board, which can be used to 
do a ddos attack and share the or steal the ssh credentials and config files so it upgraded itself because of the fact that nobody was able to uh, protect or detect from this uh, crypto miners so e- even if you take the example of uber right in 2019 uh there there was a crypto miner which was installed to the uh infrastructure of of uber and uh, uh the team didn't know what happened and uh, until there was a hike in their uh billing right uh, there, that then only the people were like uh, thinking why we are getting this much bill without using uh, uh this uh, infrastructure as much as we want right so the, 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 you can understand how uh, crypto miner is going to create a problem in that sense right yeah correct I, i remember that story and it answers my question okay so uh, okay apart from this one like let's suppose if i'm a user or developer right and i don't know like what these crypto mining malware are but still i want to protect my workload uh, how cubamer is helping in there like for unknown user right yes, yes. That, that that's an that's an excellent question because that that's going to be coming to everyone's mind if i am unaware of all these things how am i going to get myself protected right so in that case also we have it covered so if you go to help.technox.com you can see that we have actually created a solution using our auto discovery engine so what auto discovery does is it uh, uses the information that's going to come from the cube armor and uh, uh, cilium and it's going to suggest auto discover policies which are going to be tailored to whatever environment you are using you don't even need to change anything it's going to show you a quick fix for everything or the uh, if i may like uh, it's going to show you the exact values that needs to be uh, running in the cluster so that uh, it's going to uh, show you the zero trust model so you can install the uh, auto discovery in two simple steps just by downloading the uh, using this command which installs the necessary modules in your kubernetes environment and just use the get auto discover policies call command this will give you every policies which you need to apply onto your cluster to make it a zero trust and a secure Okay, so basically, uh, to summarize, uh, I don't have to do anything. All will be done if I just go over and install the auto discovered policy. Correct? Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Um, one one question, right? Um, suppose I want to contribute to the project. What what are the ways one can contribute to this project? Yes, that is also here. If you go to Cube Armor uh, slash Cube Armor in GitHub, you can find the contribution guide which is given in the Cube Armor repository itself. You can pick an issue and work with us, or you can, if you are a new contributor or if you, or if you are going to start the contribution uh, for the first time, right? We have the best, uh, good first issues tagged and picked for you. You can take a look at it, and uh, even if it's not. Uh, 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 if if you are not the developer kind of person it, it, that also doesn't matter like if if you can uh, give a hand in the policy templates which i showed you uh, before uh, starting right here you can see the policy tailored to every cves every malware and uh, every workloads uh, workload which we you can find so you can contribute that uh, that to also or if you are not even interested in contributing in a, any of the coding uh, kind of things then you can always contribute your ideas you can give feedback so that uh, cubarmer can mature and uh, uh, mature enough so that uh, everything will be automated someday great okay so thanks uh, vishnu that answers my questions thank you salman thank you vishnu again for delivering the session with us Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us.